Post-perfusion syndrome, also known as pump head, is a constellation of neurocognitive impairments attributed to cardiopulmonary bypass, CPB, during cardiac surgery. Symptoms of post-perfusion syndrome are subtle and include defects associated with attention, concentration, short-term memory, fine motor function, and speed of mental and motor responses. Studies have shown a high incidence of neurocognitive deficit soon after surgery, but the deficits are often transient with no permanent neurological impairment. Evidence A study by Newman ETAL at Duke University Medical Center published in the New England Journal of Medicine, NEJM, showed an increased incidence of cognitive decline after coronary artery bypass surgery, CABG, both immediately. 53% at discharge from hospital, and over time, 36% 6 weeks, 24% at 6 months, and 42% at 5 years. This study shows an association of neurocognitive decline with CABG, but does not show causation, the study lacks a control group and is considered level 2-3 evidence. Also, the statistical calculation of cognitive decline has been demonstrated as the least reliable due to practice effects, measurement error, and the regression to the mean phenomenon. Subsequent studies have compared on-pump CABG to off-pump coronary artery bypass, OPCAB, essentially establishing controls to compare the incidence of neurocognitive decline in CABG with and without the use of CPB. A small study, 60 patients total, 30 in each treatment arm, by Zimbar ETAL demonstrated neurocognitive impairment at both 1 week and 10 weeks postoperatively. A larger study, 281 patients total, by Van Dijk ETAL showed CABG surgery without cardiopulmonary bypass improved cognitive outcomes 3 months after the procedure, but the effects were limited and became negligible at 12 months. Furthermore, the Van Dijk study showed no difference between the on-pump and off-pump groups in quality of life, stroke rate, or all-cause mortality at 3 and 12 months. A study by Jensen ETAL published in Circulation found no significant difference in the incidence of cognitive dysfunction 3 months after either OPCAB or conventional on-pump CABG. Given the above evidence, there is high incidence of neurocognitive deficit post-bypass surgery, but the deficits are transient with no permanent neurological impairment. Controlled on-pump versus off-pump cardiac surgery has only been studied in the setting of CABG and is not necessarily generalizable to other types of cardiac surgery. Recent advancements in transcatheter and percutaneous valve replacement may soon allow comparison of other types of cardiac surgery with and without CPB. Neurocognitive Deficit as a Consequence of Vascular Disease A study by McKen ETAL compared the neurocognitive outcome of people with coronary artery disease, CAD, to heart-healthy controls, people with no cardiac risk factors. People with CAD were subdivided into treatment with CABG, OPCAP and non-surgical medical management. The three groups with CAD all performed significantly lower at baseline than the heart-healthy controls. All groups improved by three months, and there were minimal intrasubject changes from three to twelve months. No consistent difference between the CABG and off-pump patients was observed. The authors concluded patients with long-standing coronary artery disease have some degree of cognitive dysfunction secondary to cerebrovascular disease before surgery, there is no evidence the cognitive test performance of bypass surgery patients differed from similar control groups with coronary artery disease over a 12-month follow-up period. A related study by Selness ETAL concluded patients with coronary artery bypass grafting did not differ from a comparable non-surgical control group with coronary artery disease one or three years after baseline examination. This finding suggests that late cognitive decline after coronary artery bypass grafting previously reported by Newman ETAL may not be specific to the use of cardiopulmonary bypass but may also occur in patients with very similar risk factors for cardiovascular and cerebrovascular disease. 
Proposed Mechanism Physicians have theorized that the syndrome is caused by tiny debris and air bubbles, microemboli, that enter the brain via cardiopulmonary bypass. Surgeons attempt to minimize time spent on bypass to decrease postoperative deficits. Studies have shown increased bypass time is associated with increased incidence and severity of post-perfusion syndrome and mortality. It is unclear how increases in bypass time would result in such increases if pre-existing cardiovascular and cerebrovascular conditions are the principal causative mechanisms of post-perfusion syndrome. In the press, Post-perfusion syndrome has attracted some public notoriety following the coronary bypasses of former U.S. President Bill Clinton and Vice President Dick Cheney. Using the NEJM article discussed above to provide credibility to the claim. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.